Genshin Impact has been out for over a year now. By now, maybe you're even a jaded gacha veteran, battle-hardened by your multiple chichi pools. If you were once a pure and untainted newbie to the genre of gacha games way back then, hopefully you've gotten used to managing your wishing resources well enough to get the characters you've desired the most. However, it's not that easy sometimes. There are multiple factors stacked against all of us, especially as a free-to-play or low-spend player. For one, MiHoYo does a great job of making all their new characters super appealing. Take MiHoYo's trailers, for example. Pretty much all of MiHoYo's trailers are extremely high quality. The trailers generally have great directing, music, and art. I personally even get excited for the character trailers sometimes, which some may consider a silly thing to get excited over, but that just shows how high quality those trailers are in general. As an active player, the fear of missing out when a new character drops is often a very real thing. The other factor that makes getting the characters you want difficult is that MiHoYo is famously really stingy with giving out Primo Gems and Fates, so accumulating wishing currency can take a lot of patience. Being constantly enticed to roll on the new banners while only having access to a limited amount of wishing resources means that getting the characters you want can often take some strategizing. That is, if you don't want to just rely on pure luck. While I can't guarantee that you'll always get the characters you want the most, if you follow these guidelines I'm about to give, I can say at the very least that you'll have better odds for pulling the characters you want the most going forward into the future. Consider sharing these tips with your fellow gacha gambling friends to try to help them save some money. My first tip for making sure you pull the characters you want is to not summon on the weapon banner. This is just my personal opinion, but I think getting a new weapon is much more boring than getting a new character. And if you have limited wishing resources, you need to learn how to prioritize what's most important to you. The characters have personalities and unique gameplay kits. Meanwhile, the weapons pretty much only serve to make your character a bit stronger. They're stat sticks, basically, albeit pretty nice looking ones. Besides that, you don't actually need 5 star weapons to full 36 star clear the abyss. With good enough artifacts, 4 star weapons are really all that's necessary. The rates on the weapon banner are also much worse than the rates on the character banner. Pity on the character banner comes after just one 5 star failure. Pity on the weapon banner, on the other hand, comes after two 5 star failures, which is pretty significant. The rate to pull the banner 5 star you want on the character banner is 50%. The rate to pull a specific 5 star weapon on the weapon banner is 37.5%. So not only are 5 star weapons not necessary for clearing any of the game's content, they also have much worse odds than the character banner. I'd personally recommend only pulling on the weapon banner if you're a whale or a dolphin. If you keep spending your wishing currency on the weapon banner, sooner or later that will prevent you from pulling a character you want on the character banner later down the line. If you're okay with that, then do as you will, but just be fully aware of the trade-off you're making in doing so. One thing I will give Mihoyo credit for is that they have guaranteed pity on their character banners, unlike many other notable gacha games. What the pity means is that if you fail to get the feature banner 5 star once on the character banner, the next time you get a 5 star on the character banner, it's guaranteed to be the banner character. This removes much of the RNG from the equation. As a low spending or free to play player, I cannot overstate how incredibly valuable this guaranteed pity is, and I highly recommend not risking it once you get it. Following that line of thinking, if you have the 5 star guarantee on character banner, don't go crazy pulling for specific 4 star characters and risk burning your 5 star guarantee. If you don't have guaranteed pity, then by all means, roll away for the 4 star character you want. But in general, the 4 star characters are much easier to get than the 5 stars. Mihoyo has even set a precedent of giving away many of the 4 star characters for free during events. Off the top of my head, from the in-game events, we've gotten a free Fischl, a free Lydia 4 star of our choice from a selection of Lydia characters, a free Diona, and a free Shinyan. For the character banner 5 stars, on the other hand, not a single one has ever been given out for free in the game's history. Furthermore, the 4 star characters all eventually go to the standard banner so they're much more accessible than the 5 stars. Because the 5 stars on the character banner do not go to the standard banner. So conserving your guaranteed pity for 5 star characters should be your priority in my opinion. Because you'll most likely eventually get all the 4 stars anyway. As long as you keep playing and are willing to be patient. If you want to put the odds in your favor, one of the best ways of doing that is taking full advantage 
of the character banner guaranteed pity when you do get it. My third tip is to figure out and understand what you're looking for most in a character so you don't end up regretting who you wish for. This is going to take some personal introspection. What are you looking for in a character? Is it whether the character has fun gameplay? Is it the character's personality that's most important? Is it whether or not the character is meta? Is it how much you like their design? If you aren't able to understand what you yourself want the most out of a character, then you are bound to regret how you spend your gotcha wishes at some point. For me, liking both the character's personality and their gameplay is my requirement. So for example, while I think Zhongli's personality is really cool, I'm not interested in being so invincible that I forget how to dodge. So I didn't pull for Zhongli. On the other hand, I think Kazuha's personality is cool, and his gameplay is really fun to me. So I went for Kazuha. After you figure out what you're looking for most in a character, Make sure you only pull for characters that you're absolutely sure you will really enjoy, based on the criteria that you set for yourself. If you really care about the meta, then make absolutely sure that the character is meta before you pull for them. If you want to increase your odds of getting your favorite characters, you'll need to become very, very picky, since after all, you only have a limited amount of wishing resources. My fourth tip is to appreciate the characters you already have and the existing game without summoning. With good enough artifacts, pretty much any character can be pretty viable, outside of full star clearing floor 12 of the Spiral Abyss, which most players understandably don't seem to care about anyway, given the meager rewards. Believe it or not, Genshin Impact is still a really good game, even if you're just running the Traveler, Amber, Kaya, and Lisa. Very importantly, appreciating the game and the characters you already have will help prevent you from jumping in on every single brand new character bandwagon when their shiny new character trailer comes out. If you don't appreciate the characters you already have, any new character may start to look appealing to you, and you may end up rolling for a character you'll regret rolling for later because of that. Here's my final tip. In your mind, Mentally set aside your wishing resources for specific characters you want. If you don't know who you're saving wishes for, you're much more likely to suck at saving. Ideally, you want to make sure you have enough wishes to guarantee the character even with the worst possible theoretical luck. I know that saving up that many wishes can be pretty daunting, but if you're able to do this successfully, you will guarantee you'll pull the character you want when their banner finally rolls around. And if you don't end up spending all the wishes you saved, you can just save those wishes for the next character you really want. As an aside note, this is actually an effective strategy for saving money in real life as well, or saving anything else really. By mentally allocating a resource for a specific purpose, you're much less likely to misuse that resource, psychologically speaking. That's it for the Genshin Gacha Guide. If you found this guide useful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and have a good one.